It's go time. Today's Tuesday and we are live from the quarantine zone. We are here to finish up April. We've got our strength circuit today. So we're going to have some fun with some kettlebells and some dumbbells. We're going to do some very, very challenging uh, body weight strength training here in the beginning. It's going to be a blast. Um, we're wrapping up the, the month. The theme was everyday heroes showing up, going into the roar, facing the thing that you fear and, um, and, and making a difference. And uh, the stories were everything from moms rescuing, you know, kids who are drowning to uh, students on their way to prom, the high school prom to earthquakes in India and typhoons and uh, tsunamis in Japan and uh, all these extraordinary circumstances and uh, people stepping up and going above and beyond. The, um, the 164 uh, habit for April, although we, we didn't talk about it much, was to unplug. And um, that's, a, that's a really good challenge for all of us to do right now because there's so much information coming in and, and it's the way that we communicate with each other in the way that we uh, uh, you know, work or the way that we connect with our family and friends. So um, I will, I'll just uh, highlight the benefits of unplugging um, today, this morning, before we get started. And when you unplug uh, from technology, you're, you're, you're giving your nervous system a chance to rest. Um, it's, you know, the blue light from your phones and from your screens are very stimulating. And uh, the, you know, constant need to update uh, I was looking in the stats for the compulsively checking their checking your phone. It was something like in 2000. It was something like the average person checks their phone around 95 or 105 times. It was something pretty significant. Um, and it's up to you know now if you look at your screen time and the apps that measure like how much screen time you're getting. We're talking about you know get, getting somewhere between three and five hours of screen time for uh, the average American, which is just it, amazing, right? And yeah, we're, I think we're working from our phones, but also there's a lot of entertainment and social media uh, happening, which um, it, it might, for me, it might, my intention might be to be productive, but often you can get sidetracked and, and go down a rabbit hole. But all that is to say, uh, the benefits of unplugging specifically before bed help you, or help helping and aid your sleep uh, makes a huge difference. Um, that's one of the things that um, we talked a lot about during sleep month uh, back a thousand years ago before this uh, pandemic started when we were going through our, our, our sleep habits. Um, so unplugging, very beneficial. You know what else is beneficial? Push-ups, pistol squats, and stretches. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to do a Cossack stretch, which is a bent knee stretch. I'm on my right knee, left foot's kicked out. I'm rocking forward and back, sitting on my foot with my toe underneath me, stretching the adductor, moving in and out, letting that groin open up. I'm gonna go 10 reps here, rocking back and forth. If you're getting more mobile, like uh, I am and like Brenda is, you can, you can sink down into that, kick that foot out a little further. When you do your 10 reps, you're gonna lift and tap that leg, that trail leg. You're gonna do it 10 times. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Then you're gonna switch sides. Seven, eight, we're rocking back. Then lifting and tap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keep those elbows locked. Ten. Do you have a question for me? So we're going to continue to work on that groin and really loosen it up for our pistol squats today. So we're going to kick into the frog. So my knees are going to be out. My toes are going to be pointed away from me. 
sort of sinking into the floor here, and I'm gonna rock forward and back, and I'm sitting and sinking into that frog position. And then as I sit back, as I push myself into my hips, I feel that adductor grab, so I'm gonna pause for a second, and I'm gonna go forward again. So I'm going back and forth, and I'm lingering at the stretch point, so I'm not trying to force it, but I am just kind of leaning into it, letting that adductor Relax just a little bit. Taking a breath maybe when I sit back into my hips. Inhale through the nose. Come right back out. Sit in. Oh, moving back and forth. We're going to bob back and forth about 10 times. In and out. Oh. And then once you're on the 10th one, just going to hold it and then you're gonna kind of sit into the, those hips, relax. Then you're gonna squeeze the earth. We're gonna squeeze for five, four, three, two, one, and then you're gonna let go and let those hips relax a little bit more. And then we're gonna stand up. Ah. Now we're gonna warm up our shoulders and our lats and our thoracic spine. I'm going to start by stretching out the lat. So I'm going to reach across my body. And I'm going to chop into the floor. And I'm going to reach my hips away from my wrist. So I'm pushing down through my, my hand. If I'm reaching from my uh, left hand, I'm reaching my hip backwards away from that left hand. And I'm breathing into that rib cage. So I'm stretching this side of my body. It feels really good, by the way. And then I'm going to... Exhale, and I'm going to push my hips further out. Inhale. Exhale, push my hips further out. Really letting my breath stretch my rib cage. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is so good. Lengthening, one more breath. Ha. Ah. And I'm uh, going to switch sides, chop, pushing my hand into the floor, seeking, reaching my hip back away from my hand, my wrist, inhaling through the nose. I'm going to take five big breaths here. Oh, wow. This side's very tight. As I exhale, reaching my hips back. It's really easy to hold your breath unintentionally here. One more big breath. Pushing out. Nice. OK. So we've stretched out those lats. Now we're going to, going to go ahead and do a yoga windmill. So I'm going to be in this big, long lunge. My back foot pushed backwards as far as I can, back leg locked out. My hands are on the inside on the same line as my heel. I'm going to reach the inside arm forward, pushing out. Reaching all the way up, following my hand and my eyes, rotating at the, at the shoulder, at the arm, at the humerus, like a rotisserie chicken, till my arm becomes parallel to the floor, bending that elbow, dropping all the way down, and I touch my elbow to the heel. And I'm gonna switch. The same thing with the other leg. Lead knee pushes forward, back foot pushes backwards, so the hips are doing two different things. Reaching forward with the inside arm, all the way up, rotating at the shoulder until I become parallel with the floor, bending the elbow, dropping it down. Yes. Switch sides. All the way out. Rotating through. Good. Switch. 
rocking it out. Reaching, back leg stays straight, Josh. All the way up, rotating through. Coming back down. We're gonna go one more time through, full strides. Out, up, rotating. Boom. Locking out the leg. Bam. Whew. Okay, awesome. Now, shoulders are warming up, hips are warming up. We're gonna do a uh, couple of push-ups and then we're gonna get started. So, the T-spine push-up. We're gonna activate the core, chest, arms. Feet together, knees together. Full push-up, oops, sorry, feet apart. <laughs> I'm gonna rotate up, come back down, full push-up back down. So you're going to do five on each side. So if you need to, you can modify by putting your hands on a couch, on a bed, but you got to get that full depth. Got to go deeper, Reba, deeper, touch that floor. All right, Brenda, I'm checking you out. So make sure you're getting that full range of motion. Warriors, touch, boom. All the way down. We want to stretch out those pec muscles. I'm gonna get that thoracic spine moving. Get that blood pumping. Now, for our strength set, today we are gonna do pistol squats, and then we're gonna have a, a push up that's as challenging as we can muster. So, for the push up, you've got a couch, you've got a floor, you've got things of different uh, uh, heights around your house, and I want you to find something that you can be explosive off of. So, if you can, these are easy for you, maybe you'll do five or six reps. If these are challenging for you, maybe you'll do uh, like one, two, or three. So if you're doing them from the couch, it looks like this. You're gonna go fast, maybe even hop up off the couch. If you're doing them from the floor, feet and knees together, hop up off the floor. So go ahead and do a couple of practice reps, finding that height for you, for your, for your situation. Now, if you're not doing explosive push-ups, it's okay, just do speed push-ups, just go fast. So it needs to be challenging enough to where you have to put out effort, but it can't be so challenging that you can't go fast. Now, the pistol squat is a lot of fun. It's a one-legged squat. It works the hip, the hamstring, the quad, the abs, because you have to maintain tension and balance. So when you're doing it, you're gonna find a, a position that's uh, a challenge for you. I like to start with the bench to get warmed up. But what I'm gonna do is, as I get ready to descend in the pistol squat, I'm gonna lock out my non-active leg, my inactive leg, squeezing my fists, touching, coming back up. Dropping down, touching, coming back up. So. Just working on that range of motion and balance. So you're gonna do five reps on the left, five reps on the right. And you're getting your, you're getting your practice set up. Making sure your height, the height is correct for you. So coming down, touch. Now the goal is to lean forward over your, over your hip and over your knee so that your center of gravity is where you're connecting to the floor. So I'm leaning forward, touching, Notice my knee comes forward. I'm using the ankle mobility. So I feel that in my hamstring, my glute, and obviously it's a strain on, on my whole body. So you're gonna warm up on your spot. If you need a little bit more difficulty, you can get like a stool or something lower to the ground. This is what I'll do. So have some fun with that. All right, so we're gonna do five sets of five. What we're gonna do is you're gonna do a back-to-back -back supersets. You're gonna do your push-ups and your squats, and then you're gonna rest for about 45 seconds. 
So uh, if you have a watch on, a computer timer, uh, I'm going to count down my timer here in the gym so you have a little bit of reference point, but we're going to get going. All right, set one. Time to get going on those push-ups. So I'm going to be fast and explosive. Three, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And so before I get tired, I'm going to stop doing my reps so that I can be strong. I'm going to go over to my pistol squat, get going, locking out the leg, staying active. Touch. One. Touch. Two. Touch. Three. Touch. Four. It's about all the good ones I have on my left leg, so I'm going to match it with my right leg. Touch. One. Touch. Two. Touch. Three. Touch. Four. Wow. I'm resting. 45 seconds to get my water. So, if you have a camera on your phone or your computer, turn it on so I can make sure people are doing good work. So, that's my, that's my request. Let me see you. Reveal yourself. If you want help to get better, a great way to do it is to let a coach watch you for a second. Nice. There we go. Even if you're training in outer space, I could still help. All right. That was about 45 seconds, so it's about time to go. Okay. All right. Got some good elevation. Got some feet and knees together. Looking good, Reba. Yeah. Nice and powerful. Great speed, Brenda. Okay. Excellent. Re uh, Steel, I'm still just staring at the, at the earth, but that's okay. You're doing other stuff? Okay. All right. Got some pistols. Uh-huh. Okay, good. Okay, okay, good. So, for the push-up, to add some tension to this and to add some benefit, what I want you to do is corkscrew that shoulder into your rib cage on the way down, so you're twisting in, tightening up that lat like you're, like you're uh, t tensioning down a screw. And then you're gonna explode out and that lat's gonna release. That's really gonna help your shoulders be more stable as you go through this training. Now, for Brenda and for Reba, when you're doing that pistol squat, if you could see me from the side, if I'm sitting down instead of squatting down, here's what happens. So look, at, look, how, look how my shin, it wants to stay vertical. If I just sit down, that shin stays pretty vertical. But if I squat down, now I'm gonna control the descent, that knee is gonna travel forward, I'm gonna stay over my weight, and I'm not gonna sit down as much, I'm going to control and lower myself down. So I encourage you to lean forward, allow that knee to translate forward in space, I keep the tension of the quad, the VMO, it's all that stuff. Your, your knee has to be intrinsically stable. There's all kinds of good stuff happening there. So lean forward. Instead of thinking about it as, as a sit down, think about it as a squat down. So just try to lower yourself very vertically, letting that knee come forward just a, just a bit, and you're gonna get more out of it, more out of each rep. That's right, all right, Stila. Excellent. Oh, wonderful. Good balance, Stila. You got it. Excellent speed. All right, clock is ticking. I see people on their third sets already. I'm going to get some reps in. <clears throat> What's that, on, Bootsy? Nice. Whew. 
That's enough. <laughs> All right, we're rocking and rolling. <laughs> no joke. These are comically difficult. That's okay. That's the point. All right, Brenda, raise your hand. How many sets are you in? What set are you on? Will you, three, four. Gotcha. Cool. All right, warriors, finish strong. <clears throat> Excellent. Last set. All right, we're going to ride on out of our strength circuit. Good work, everybody. Finish strong. Every rep counts. Nice work, Stila. Good job, Reba. OK, as you get ready for the next round, you're going to need your weight. If you have uh, dumbbells or kettlebells or both, that's fine. No worries. You, we're going to get along with whatever you got. So the, I'm going to do squats, but I'm going to do them with weight. So uh, if you have one heavy dumbbell or two heavy dumbbells, whatever, you're going to carry it up on the chest. So here's my goblet position. My feet are shoulder width apart, toes pointed out. And I'm going to squeeze my, I'm going to squeeze my, my weight with my hands. So I'm creating tension in the upper body. So kind of crushing this uh, dumbbell or kettlebell. And I'm going to pull myself down into the hole. I'm going to drop down, so my ribs are going to come down with me, so I'm in this nice straight line. I'm not arched, also I'm not rounded, I'm just neutral, and then I'm going to drive up with my hips. So I'm pulling straight down, driving up with my hips. Pulling straight down, driving up with my hips. So I'm going to do 10 perfect reps to warm up with. Let me see them. Great, great. Nice. All right, Reba, your goal, take your elbow, touch it inside of the thigh. So you got great depth, right? Yeah, inside. So you want to, yeah, you want to have room. Yeah. Woo -wee. That extra inch makes a huge difference, doesn't it? That's perfect. So you're doing your, you're doing your kettlebell or your goblet squat. Then we're going to do, a, if you have a kettlebell, you could do a clean. If you don't have a kettlebell, you could do a Romanian deadlift. So if you're holding your dumbbells in your hand, you're just going to dip your hips back, drive them forward. If, you've got, if you're lucky enough to have a kettlebell that works for you, you could do a, a, a single arm clean here. And I'll show you the clean, and I'll show you the Romanian deadlift too. But the clean is, you're going to keep that kettlebell close, so you're going to be over it butt back, chest up, knees out. You're going to explode through your hips, driving straight up, whipping that kettlebell up to the shoulder. 
in one motion. Setting it down. So you're going to do five with the left, five with the right to warm up. And if you're doing the remaining deadlift, you're just going to almost touch the ground, but not quite. Drive the hips forward. And really squeeze those glutes. Power, power those hips. So five, five with the left, five with the right. Nice. So try to scrape that kettlebell along your torso, Bootsy, so keep it in close. There you go. Do it a couple reps to make it look good. Balance out. Okay. Nice, Brenda. Good, good RDLs. Okay. So we're going to superset this one. We're going to do back to back. It's going to be a lot of volume. Now, I'm going to set the, the, the rep scheme as though you have a light weight. If you have a very heavy weight, if you've got a 95 pound kettlebell, you're going to have to modify. So I want you to do 20 squats, and then I want you to do 20 uh, Romanian deadlifts or cleans. And you're not going to rest between them. You're going to go from one to the next. Then you're going to rest for a minute at the end. So you're going to go through both of those sets. So if you're doing the clean, you're going to do 10 on the left, 10 on the right for a total of 20. If you're doing the Romanian deadlift, you're just going to uh, do 20 period. And then you're going to give yourself a 60 second break. So 20 squats, 20 hinges, whether that's the RDL or the clean, and you're going to go back to back. Yes. Love it. And then you're going to give yourself a full minute to recover. Nice. Great squats, Brenda. We've come a long way, haven't we? Nice, Stila. Good depth. Nice. All right, Brenda. Remember that same rules apply. So try to touch that elbow on the inside of the thigh to give yourself that depth. Yes. OK. And then you're going to go into the, into the clean or into the Romanian deadlift. Yes, it's okay to be tired, but don't let, don't let that impact your work. Focus. Exhale when you contract the glutes. Drive forward. Everybody's looking sharp. Okay, Stila, looking good. Keep that dumbbell close to you. So, chest is up. Your eyes should be able to look forward the whole time. If, you, if you're looking at the ground, if you're looking at your shoelaces, you're probably not in that correct position. Eyes forward, nice, good cleans, Reba, keeping that weight close to the body, close to that center of gravity. Good job, Brenda. All right. Then you're going to give yourself 60 seconds of rest. Yeah. 60 seconds. So we're going to do three sets. That was one set we completed. We're going into the second set next. Oh. How's it feeling, Bootsy? <laughs> Beautiful squats. That's right, Warriors. <laughs> nice job, Bob. Nice job, Rowan. <laughs> Depth before dishonor.
Aha. Good. So when you're doing the clean, make sure that hand stays close to the body. And then at the top, you're leading with the elbow and you whip the elbow underneath it. So if you transition too early, but you're just crazy strong like Stila, you can still do it, but you're not getting that follow through with the hip to, to keep that tension in the lower body. All right. End of the second round, 60 seconds of rest, getting that water. Then coming in to the third round. <clears throat> this kettlebell might be a little too heavy for me, I'm starting to notice. That's okay. I'm gonna do what I can do here with this, these reps. So if your if your goblet squat if if you're too heavy, just drop the rep count just a little bit. All right, warriors, last set. Last Wonderful, great, like an elevator, it goes all the way down, all the way up. So good, what a great way to start the day. We're going to be giving our legs a rest on the next round. So look forward to that. As you finish up, I'm going to go ahead and begin to demo the next round. So <clears throat> yes. One of the things we're trying to do with uh, strength training is we want to practice the fundamentals and the basics. So we're doing, obviously, pushing, pulling, squatting, hinging. All those things are really fundamental to your health and fitness. The push-up, getting your first push-up from the floor is an elusive little guy sometimes. So we're, doing, we're going to do push-ups in this circuit, and we're going to do them in an eccentric fashion meaning we're not worried about the pushing part, counterintuitively, what we're worried about is having that slow, full descent. And because we're not pushing, you could do things like start from a position like the floor or a low box or something where you can get a lot of tension like you, like you wouldn't normally be able to do a push up from that. And then you're going to keep those shoulders past the wrists, feet and knees together. I'm gonna draw myself to the floor, lay down, and then I could push up with my knees, getting back into the high plank, and then do the eccentric again, 1,000, 2,000, with the goal of spending two seconds on the descent. So I'm gonna come through, and I'm, I'm trying to do six reps here, as slowly as I can. And then we're gonna go from there to the single arm row. So we've done our push-ups, now I'm gonna take my weight, and I'm going to do a beautiful single arm row and I'm going to brace against my leg so that I can be really stable and strong and keep that body position good. So I'm here at a nice angle, back leg straight, 
pulling, my thumb is pointing into my knee. So my thumb is pointing into my body, that's a pronated grip. So I'm really working on that upper back, thoracic spine, rhomboids, all those upper back muscles. I'm gonna do 12 reps on the one, 12 reps on the other. So for your warm up, I want you to do a few of these to get the positioning right, making sure that you're not off kilter. And be careful with that weight. It's really easy to get too much weight on those and not, not quite be where we want to be. All right, steal a long stride. We want to have a long distance between our feet and our legs so we're really stretched out. Yeah, you, that's going to help keep you low to the ground. And that uh, knee or the elbow should rest right on the knee or the thigh so that you're supported. And again, getting as low to the ground as possible. There you go, Brenda. Nice. And then the final piece is that thumb is going to be pulled inside. So it's going to be pointing in towards you. Yeah. Nice. And then the upright row. So the thumb is always going to be pointing in towards you. The palm is not going to be pointing in towards you. The thumb is going to be pointing in towards you. Then your final exercise is the upright row. You're holding on to the kettlebell or the dumbbell, leading with the elbows, keeping it up, working that upper back. So you're going to go give me 10 reps of that just to warm up. And then this is going to be one long circuit. So it's going to be push-ups to the row, to the upright row. We're going to do them all together. Six push-ups, 12 rows each side, and then 20 upright rows. So we're really roasting the upper body right now. That's what's going to happen. 6, 12, 20. And so when you, if you've got a couple practice reps, good. Go back to the beginning. We're going to do three sets of, of all of these reps, one right after the other with about a minute of rest uh, in between. All right, go ahead and go. We've got our push-ups. Good. Slow lowering down. Yeah. That is exactly right, Reba. Good. Okay, Brenda, you gotta go, you gotta get a lower surface than that. That's too easy. Maybe you could use the couch, maybe you could use something else. Yeah, you could try it from the floor. Worst case scenario, you're gonna fall six inches. It's okay. Yeah, look at you. Exactly. So, if a couple of perfect eccentrics. That's all we want. If you can get six, that's, that's wonderful. Nice, but what you're doing is you're exposing your brain to the tension of doing push-ups from the floor. So this is really gonna help you bridge that gap to doing floor push-ups, which is gonna happen. Excellent, nice. Okay, good. Get that stride longer, Reba. We want to get those feet real far. Yeah, go low. Good. Nice, Brenda. Thumb pointed in. Thumb pointed in. Uh-huh. Nice, Stila. Good elbows, loving it. Excellent. Everybody's looking so good. I gotta get me some of that. Gotta give me some of that. Practicing those eccentrics. Glutes on, right? Bootsy, stand tall. Look at your posture. Look at you. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 6. The body loves novelty. So just by changing the pace, angle of your action, you're giving it so much more refreshments. Again, 20 reps on that upright row, and then give yourself a little bit of rest so you can be strong on the next round. Everybody's looking perfect. Loving it. Oh. 
ok second round getting after it Excellent work, Warriors. Good. When you're doing those eccentrics, remember, if you don't have any more good reps, that's OK. You can max out the good reps, save the bad reps in the tank, and then move on. Nice speed. Reba going in slow motion. She somehow stopped the Earth's uh, spin. Time froze while she was going through her, her push-up. Actually, Superman must have uh, saved Lois Lane from uh, an avalanche because that was a, that was a long time passing for that, that push-up. Four. Talk about a movie reference, though. That was good. Do you remember that one? No, what? Was it a sinkhole? Yeah, she was getting buried alive. Earthquake? What's up, young coach? Okay. Everybody's looking so good. Sharp this morning. Wonderful. Perfect. All right, Warriors, wrapping up your second set, getting ready for your last set. Third set. We're, uh, we're almost to the final circuit here. We're gonna do some really good uh, shoulder drills to finish smoking those arms and shoulders, which we've been working on. And then we're gonna do some abs, of course, because why wouldn't we? What would be a day at TFW without training the core? Just couldn't, couldn't happen. All right. Okay, as we uh, finish this uh, circuit up, all you'll need is some space to do your uh, mountain climbers and bent wise. I'm gonna grab a couple more push-ups. Slow, all the way down, explode up, slow. Explode up, slow. Explode up, slow. Explode up. Nice rows, looking good, Reba. 
Stila's flying through it with a purpose. Great form. Brenda, awesome. Let's get those thumbs pointed inside towards the rib cage, Brenda. Palms for towards the feet. It's all right. Row it up. Okay. Out of here. This. So for the final round, we're going to do a set of Y's and mountain climbers. And we're not going to rest on this one. We're just going to go through it. So our shoulders are going to get pretty tired, and that's OK. We're going to really train the uh, mid trap with this uh, bent Y. So I'm going to be in the hinge position. I'm going to karate chop my knees. I'm going to reach overhead at a 20 or a, I don't know, 45 degree angle away from my face. My palms will face in. So I'm looking like this from the side. And I'm just going to go as high as I can. I'm not going to force it. Just going to be here. Then I'm going to do 20 reps here. Go ahead and make it happen. Excellent. Everybody's looking sharp. Good. Nice, Brenda. Feet a little closer together for me, Brenda. There you go. Leaning over, pressure in the front of the foot too. I want you to feel that in the hamstrings. Good. Nice, Stila. Get to 20, and then you're gonna drop down. Mountain climber position, same side. So I'm gonna go left knee to left elbow, right knee to right elbow. I'm gonna do 10 per side. I'm gonna go as quickly as I can through it, making it look good. I'm gonna keep my shoulder past my wrist, so I'm not trying to, to get into the downward dog position. I wanna be right here, getting all that tension, keeping it in the core, Keep it in the hips. 10 reps on each side, all the way through. And then you're going to go right back into the bent Y. So mountain climbers, shoulders forward, Brenda, lean forward. Good. Nice. All right, Stila, remember to keep those elbows straight when you're going over your head. That's all you got to do. OK, good. One round down, come around the second round, pressure in the, pressure in the ball of the big toe, leaning forward. Bootsy's looking perfect on her bent wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time I figure out how to control this stereo, it's gonna be, it's gonna be we're gonna have a new one. For the Y's, right to the mountain climbers, 10 on each side. Good. And that bent Y, I want to get that the butt as far back as I can. Pressure in the front of my feet, so I'm really leaning forward, almost like an L. Then I'm here. Twenty reps. And mountain climbers. Same thing. Coming down, leaning forward. One, one. Nice work, nice work. You might feel this in your back, you might feel this in your shoulders, you might feel this in your abs. Nice tabletop position, that looks great Reba. Perfect. Don't stop the rock. And then what happens is when you're finished with that third set of your Y's and mountain climbers, you're gonna go back to your homework, to dessert, to getting that, those reps in. So you're gonna do 20 squats, 10 knee grabs, 20 swimmers. 
firing it through. What set are you on, Bitsy? Done. Nice. Yeah. Yep. 20 squats. Just like we did with a goblet. This would be easy, though. We got no weight now. Boom. 20 reps. Rib cage down. Locking out those hips. Ten knee grabs on your back. One, two, three, four, all the way to ten. Great job. And then your swimmers, twenty reps, shoelaces pushed into the ground, reaching out. Pulling through, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 20 reps. Remember, keep the fingers splayed. Elbows are gonna be pulled in towards the hip bones. Shoulders are gonna come up, then down, up, then down, up, then down. As we fly through April, by fly through, it feels like time is is, is, uh, is certainly picking up speed for, for me. And I, I think everybody else is feeling like time's kind of uh, moving fast, even though we're stuck in Groundhog's Day. The, um, uh, the lesson for today was, or the moral was unplugging, you know, getting out of this cycle of attention that our electronics give us, um, whether it's for you know, connecting with family or working, still getting, getting into the moment, doing your reading, being present with yourself, cooking yourself a nice meal, taking care of yourself, all of those things are very, very, very valuable. And aside from helping you sleep and improving, improving your, uh, you know, your cognitive ability and your increased memory, all these like, wonderful things that, that are benefits of unplugging, uh, it's, also <clears throat> it's also a great habit to get into as we start to combat this uh, fear culture and, and panic culture that we're getting into. But everybody already did something positive for their health today. You showed up for yourself, you woke up, you got your movement on, you got your training in, and uh, we're gonna continue through the month of May to focus on uh, the mental and physical recovery, the uh, super compensation that I was talking about the other day, to, to come and build back, not just the where we were before, but even stronger. So. Continue to show up, continue to, to take action, continue to uh, work hard and bring forth the warrior within. Hey, 7 a.m. warriors, hey, for one second. So um, yesterday I sent out that uh, text about the warrior vault. So that's that Google Sheet. So one of, the, one of the requests that I had from the warriors was putting the workout in uh, before you guys uh, do the workout so that you can see what we're doing for that day. Some people like to take notes, some people like to work, work, write the workout down just so they have an easier thing to follow. In the actual YouTube posting, the workout is written in the description if you just pop it open. But um, if you go into the Warrior Vault, we'll always have that current week in that, in that sheet so you can look at it before, beforehand.